Axis Cavity Preparation Mandibular Incisors Hello! Let's discuss another case of Axis Cavity Preparation where we will specifically discuss the Mandibular Central Incisors. Before diving into the case, let's recap. Pop Quiz A patient reported to my clinic with a complaint of severe sensitivity in his lower front tooth for the last five days, which did not get better with medication. A clinical examination showed a carious mandibular right central incisor. On radiographic assessment, it became evident that only a root canal treatment could relieve the patient of his symptoms. With an average length of 20.8 mm, the mandibular central incisor is the smallest tooth present in the arch. The pulp chamber is both small and flat mesiodistally. It has three distinct pulp horns that disappear with age due to continuous masticatory stimulation. However, the chamber is wide labiolingually and ovoid in cross-section which tapers incisally. With these anatomical features in mind, I begin with the root canal treatment after injecting local anesthesia. The axis opening was similar to the one I performed in the case of maxillary central incisors. I was aware that these teeth usually have a straight single root with a single root canal. However, to ensure that the tooth doesn't have a second canal lingually, which often gets superimposed in radiographs, I made the axis cavity longer and ovoid instead of triangular. On being sure of just one canal, I continued my procedure of pulp extirpation using copious irrigation. While the single root naturally exits as a single apical foramen, there could be variations where it divides into two canals and may or may not merge again to exit as one apical foramen. Now let's go through how the axis opening of the mandibular lateral incisor varies from the mandibular central incisor. Compared to the central incisor, the pulp chamber and root of the lateral incisor are bigger. However, unlike the straightness of the central's root, the root of the lateral may curve, distally or labially. While the axis opening techniques of the mandibular and maxillary incisors are similar, keep in mind that tooth size and lingual shoulder can make a difference. The lingual shoulder could potentially hinder both straight line access and the location of a second canal. Now let's say a patient with a carious mandibular incisor presents with gemination or fusion. How would this affect the axis cavity preparation? By definition, we already know that gemination is an attempt of a single tooth bud to divide. And fusion is the union between the enamel and dentin of two or more separate teeth. These can be differentiated radiographically, as fusion would have more than one root canal, while gemination would have a very large single canal. In cases of fused teeth, the root canal treatment needs to be carried out like in a multi-rooted tooth, with complete pulp extirpation and chemomechanical preparation. Pop quiz.
Let's now go through the essential points about the axis cavity preparations of mandibular incisors. Mandibular central incisor Smallest tooth in the arch Single root and a single canal Canal may divide into two and then back to a single canal. Axis opening is more ovoid. Mandibular lateral incisor Bigger than the central incisor Single root and root canal Presence of a second lingual root canal Mode of axis opening for all incisors Burr initially placed perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth Then parallel to the long axis Till the drop is felt Accessing the pulp chamber which is de-roofed Straight line access established Now we come to the end of today's discussion but don't you wish to know how we go about opening the access of canines and premolars along with the extra information about GG drills? We will discuss these and much more in the next session. We hope you had fun learning with us. Music